Okay, um, now we're going to um, take the name of some uh, complex compounds and write the formula from the name. All right, so here we have hexaamine chromium 3 chloride. Okay, so hexaamine, amine is um, ammonia, and this is a chromium 3, so we know that we have uh, chromium, and then it's hexaamine, so there's six amines, or six ammonia, and that's a positive 3, so there's our cation with a positive 3 charge, which means we have to have 3 chloride to balance that out. Okay. Now here, cation is barium, positive 2, and the anion is tetrabromoferrate 3. Okay, so ferrate 3, uh, first of all we're going to have barium, and then uh, the ferrate, but it's tetrabromo, so that's Br4, and if we have a 3, positive 3 there, and the bromo is a negative 1, that makes all of this a negative 1 charge, okay? Negative 4 from there, positive 3 from there. So if all of this is a negative 1, and my barium is a positive 2, then I have to have 2 of those anions, okay? Now here I have dibromo bisethylene diamine cobalt 3 sulfate. Okay, so here's my cation, and there's the anion. All right, so the cation is a cobalt uh, compound, and uh, we have dibromo and then bisethylene diamine. Now we always write the neutral ligands first, and then the um, ionic ligands. So we're going to have ethylene diamine, and we can just abbreviate abbreviate that using EN, and it is bisethylene diamine, which means we have two of those, and dibromo, so we put the BR2 there, and there is our cation, it's cobalt 3, we have the dibromo, that gives me negative 2, positive 3, so altogether I have a positive 1, and this is a sulfate, therefore um, I need two of those um, to, to balance out. I have a negative two, positive three, so that's a positive one. I have to have two of those to balance out the negative two of the sulfate. All right, and here we have copper two, hexacyanonicolate 2. All right, so copper 2, that is my cation. And then I have hexacyanonicolate 2. So this is a nickel containing ion. Hexacyano, so 6 cyanide. All right, and it's nicolate 2. So I have a positive 2, each of the cyanides is negative 1, so negative 6, and positive 2 is a negative 4. All right, negative 4 for the anion, so I go back, this is copper 2, so I put a 2 there. Okay, that'll give me a positive 4 to balance the negative 4. Okay, now here we have sodium dichloroargentate 1. Okay, so sodium is Na, and then dichloroargentate, okay, argentum or silver um, is Ag, and then dichloro, so that'll be AgCl2, um, and You'll notice, I mean, uh, silver is always a positive one, but we write the Roman numeral anyway, 
in the names of complex compounds, um, coordination compounds. Okay, so here we have the positive one, the negative two from the two chlorides, and so that gives us the negative one, so it balances out with just one uh, sodium. All right, and uh, the last one here, triamine tricarbonyl chromium zero. Okay, um, if the uh, transition metal does not have a charge, um, it can still have some ligands with it, but uh, we just put a zero in uh, parentheses instead of the Roman numeral indicating a charge. Okay, so uh, then the formula for this compound, we put the uh, metal first, so chromium, and then triamine, tricarbonyl, we're going to put these, um, these are both neutral ligands, okay, so um, we put them in alphabetical order, similarly to the way that we do that in the name, we do it in the formula, the difference being that in the formula we do it by the uh, chemical symbol. So for carbonyl, it's CO. For amine, it's NH3. So C comes before N. So we're going to put the CO, um, the, the carbonyl, the three carbonyls there, um, and then the three amines, or the three ammonia. Okay, and because this is a coordination compound, we put that in brackets. Okay.